What's going on guys? It's Monday and just gonna try and get a little bit more of that JZ shit done. So my videos can stop consisting of purely 100% two JZ content. Cause I kinda wanna get this motor in my goddamn car so I can do some big fat fucking burnouts. You know what I'm saying? That's pretty much where I'm at. So let's get this shit banged the fuck out. So I'm just starting off by I just cleaned up my valve covers and whatnot. And I'm just gonna start giving them a coat. Just had one light coat. Um, I do need to go ahead and clean up my alternator as well. Just a little greasy, just a little bit greasy. So I gotta get those two things done. And then I also need to clean my throttle body. So as you can see, it's a little dusty, a little bit dusty in there. So, and then, okay. So I bought a drive-by wire delete from Drift Motion to make this just drive-by cable instead of drive-by wire. Um, so where I'm running into the confusion of what I actually want to do is the fact of that if I run, if I do the drive-by wire delete, then I have to buy an aftermarket idle air control, like a remote idle air control that I tap into the intake so that my car actually starts and like, well, obviously it starts, but so that it starts easily and that way I don't have a problem in the winter and shit. So I need to do that. Or I decide on just keeping it drive by wire. Now the problem that I have with keeping it drive by wire is the fact that it even says like in any standalone ECU that you get that if there's problems, that it's your, like it's your problem. Like say for instance you're driving and all of a sudden the drive-by wire decides to have a shit show in the ECU or the EMU. Well, potentially you could crash. Like realistically, if the throttle sticks wide open because the drive-by wire is tripping the fuck out, then obviously that's not a good thing. So that's the only thing stopping me from doing a straight drive-by wire and just leaving it like that. Cause I know that like all new ECUs and standalones and stuff will actually handle that shit. It's just the fact of that I don't want to, I just don't want to have problems. Like I want reliability. I just, it, it's still my daily driver. You know what I mean? So reliability is 100% key in this regard. So what I'm thinking is that I'm just going to do just a drive by wire delete. Now that I'm saying it out loud. So I'm gonna get some content to do in that. Show you guys how to do the drive-by wire delete and yeah so let me get a couple of things kicking i've also been getting an absolute ton of questions on where people can get the torque specs for the 2jz now for instance like i have like i have access to shopkey and to pro demand which is like what they use at all the mechanic shops and whatnot and literally i can search up on pro demand or shopkey each each thing and figure out the torque spec for each thing. So I kind of just pretty much made myself my own sheet, okay? And if you guys want, just take, pause it and take a screenshot. And that way you guys will have all the torque specs. Now realize that everything is in foot pounds, okay? Except for things labeled inch pounds. So those are both inch pounds and then down here, inch pounds, inch pounds, and those are inch pounds as well. Okay, and the way that I'm doing it um, is, see all the ones that are highlighted? That's all the stuff that I've actually already torqued. So as I go through, it allows me to know what actually still needs to be torqued. So for instance, crank pulley, valve covers, exhaust manifold, upper intake manifold, all my power steering jazz, engine mounts, and turbo oil outlets still need to be torqued. So yeah, that's that. But here's all the torque specs. So yeah. All right, so go ahead and get these things paint.
All right, guys, we're gonna go ahead and bang out this <clears throat> drive-by wire delete. So as you can see, there is four uh, Phillips. I'm right, just gonna pull all those out. Now at the bottom, there is this, I'm not sure if you can see it or not, see this little silver plate? This goes in between both bottom screws. So make sure that goes back the same way. All right. Now, this is what we're working with. So what happens, and the way that this works, this makes a rotation about this far before the throttle actually opens. Okay, so, okay, so this is um, the drive-by wire delete from Drift Motion. Let's see, Drift Motion, DM3403. Now, what you're gonna do, Let me get this out of this bag. What a pain in the ass. Okay. Now, the way that this goes, see this little opening, right? And then see this piece? It just literally slips right on like that. Okay? See how it's in there? And see how this rotation right here, like it's not supposed to go. It's not supposed to go like this, or like this. You know what I mean? It has to go like this, okay? And then once it's in there, they give you a supplied Allen key. And what you're gonna do, is you're gonna tighten up this little set screw. This one right here. All right. And then that's simply, all you need to do for this section, now you just want to make sure that this is actually tight, obviously. And then this goes uh, connector facing back like it did before. Like I said, make sure that you put this on the bottom like it was before. Now, the, the most important thing is not so much installing what I just installed, but it's removing the other gears, and I'll show you that in just a second. So put this all tight. I'm gonna put these aside.
Okay, now, as you can see, this right here is for the motor, like the ET SCI motor or whatever the hell you wanna call it. Now, as you can see, it's literally trying to move that bottom motor down here. Now, if you do a drive-by wire delete and you don't have this connected, this actually locks. And then when you go to try and give her, you end up breaking extreme gears in here and that's not what you want. So, boom, just like that. Now it's not trying to move that bottom one. So, just like that. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm actually removing this clutch wire here, or for this, for the drive-by wire clutch. And now you don't have to do this. Um, I'm doing it just cause, well, I don't like shit being in there if it doesn't have to be. So. Okay, so this is a drive-by wire clutch. Now, <laughs> you would not believe how much lighter this is now. That's crazy, actually. Okay, so I'm actually going to leave this gear out as well. So we got all these gears. Because now, I have literally made a 100% drive-by cable throttle body. So, now I'm going to pop this cover back on. And I'm gonna see if there's any way. Now, it's not like I recommend this by any means. I'm actually just gonna snip all these wires. Hate me for it if you want. Realistically, this could still be soldered on if I really absolutely needed to. But I don't think I will. Okay, so now I'm gonna use this to plug this hole Put a little bit of silicone in there. And now, the reason why I'm doing this is because I don't want this gear to get wet or get any shit in there, so. All right. Guys, this throttle body is so much lighter now, it's not even funny. Okay, so now I'm just gonna pop all these screws back in. All right, just like that. That's all banged up and back together. Now, you can go ahead Give this thing a cleaning and then give it some wrinkle block paint. As you can see, it's pretty caked. So, that is that. Alrighty, guys. Let's go ahead and throw this open here real quick. My operator is painted, but so here's a couple things that are going on here. So my stock map sits right here and then connects to this port. My stock fuel pressure regulator connects to this hose, to this port. I'm just gonna run my stock map until I end up going high boost because it'll hold up to, or it'll support up to 16 PSI. Which don't get me wrong isn't a lot, but that'll be enough for right now. Because even though the ECU master that I bought has an internal map, I don't feel like running a vacuum line from the engine bay into the car. There's just no point. I'd rather just wire it up to my stock map, and then when I need to, I'll just replace it with either a 3.5 or a 4 bar. But, uh... Here for a 
That's coming. And for anybody who was wondering, my cams were not rusty. I just, I had cleaned them with some brake clean. And so they were dry. And when these cams are dry because of the oils, so dark and dirty, it literally stains cams brown. So no, they're not rusty. They're just dry. Let's go take a look at these valve covers. My oh my, glistening. All right guys, we're gonna do, just gonna set these bell covers on right quick. I finished painting them, they're still drying a little bit. Not fully dry, so just gonna be careful. Honestly, it's the smallest things that make the biggest difference. Holy shit. It's a goddamn 2JZ. Mighty steamy, my friends. Mighty steamy. I'm not leaving this green, if anybody's curious. Um, yeah, you have to see what I'm gonna do with that. But, uh, damn. Damn! All right, guys, thanks for watching. I'm gonna head home now. Um, yeah, I'm at home now. So I got this done. I'm probably gonna start tomorrow actually wiring it up now that I have pretty much everything ready to go in terms of resealing. I'm waiting on a new valve cover gasket because the one that I ordered from Drift Motion was for a non-VBTI because I'm an idiot, but that's all besides the point. So I just gotta wait for that to come in and then that can be sealed. So in the meantime, I'm probably gonna get to the wiring. Alrighty guys, said take it easy. Thanks for watching. I really appreciate it.